It's good to have you join us on Core Digest this Wednesday morning. We are talking about the National Assembly invasion on the morning of Tuesday, 7th of August. The videos everywhere, pictures everywhere about masked officers of the Department of State Services barricading the entrance to the National Assembly and preventing lawmakers from gaining access into the Assembly complex. In response to all that went on, the acting president, Professor Yamiya Shimbajo, directed the uh, director general of the Department of State Services, Lawa Daura, to uh, hand over to the most senior person in that office, uh, relieving him of his duty. In acting capacity, now we have Matthew Shegefa heading the TSS. With me in the studio this morning is Dayo Kayade, a political technocrat. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. Player being here always. All right. The invasion of the National Assembly on Tuesday, how do you see it? Yes. Uh, that invasion has uh, opened another uh, epoch in our political history in Nigeria. Because uh, such a situation has never happened before. Even the one that no, happened, no, no. the one that happened, the one you want to refer to, the one that happened during Jonathan's era was not like this. Well, what's the difference? The difference is there, we saw the police. Okay, they were not covering their faces. They were there and they want to take responsibility for their actions. And we knew where this one was coming from. Unlike this one. You can see the barrage of um, deniers that we have, been, we have been having since yesterday. You see these people dressed like as if we are in a Gestapo period in Nigeria. It is appalling. We're not even teaching those ones coming behind us a good lesson. We are teaching them that, look, you can take claws into your hands and get over it. And nothing will happen. If not, why should they? If, if, if it is not that they are, trying to, they are trying to deceive us, if they are not having a skeleton in their cupboard. Which people now? Whoever, whoever has arranged it, by the time we get there, we, we, look at, we look at the issues, then we'll be able to know who and who arranged this. So let's get, some to, are let's saying, get to those issues now. Some are saying it's Bukola Saraki. The APC are saying it's Bukola Saraki. Some are saying it's presidency. Some are saying Oshio Mole. But let us look at the, the, the actions that happened yesterday. Number one, Oshio Mole led some people, some senators, about 30 of them, inside three buses, collated their signature, heading towards National Assembly. Know fully well that the leadership of National Assembly has arranged for a meeting for that yesterday. So, what was Oshio Mole? going there to do well we would uh, get that is one two okay two so people are saying it's bukola saraki that arranged it oh fine but then let us look at some antecedents magu was to be appointed the substantive uh uh head of efcc bukola saraki and his cohorts never wanted him but this daura who was appointed by the president, whose office is under the presidency, all right, came up with a report that uh, Magu is not fit to be the head, and he submitted that report to the Senate without even presidency. So that means it's also possible for Klasaraki to be controlling DSS. Right. But then, very appalling that I haven't seen that. Somebody you appointed is going against your wish. What are you supposed to do? In fact, what is going to happen next to our demo, to this democratic dispensation, one cannot just say, yes, 
this is exactly what is going to happen. Because it is a season film, like I said, that is still unfolding. But I can tell you that 70% we might not like, we might not likely have our election in February. You know why? These people, the present government, the present government, they are not they are not practicing democratic government, but what I called decitocratic government. The government is made up of executive, legislation, judiciary. I'm all talking of, of I'm arms. talking of decitocratic government. Which one is decitocratic government? That is everything they are doing is based on concept of deceitfulness. All right. We are not, they are not being sincere with everybody. Now, let me tell you this. Look at this. When you were passing the budget, you knew that this budget will take you to 2019, whereby one of the major projects is elections. Right? And now you know that INEC is also supposed to contribute to that particular budget preparation, which they did. All right? Don't INEC knew at that time they were preparing that budget that they were going to have this, this, and that for 2019 election when they were passing the budget. It took them some time to even pass that budget, you remember? The National Assembly invited all the, MD, uh, all the MDGs. MDAs. Oh, sorry, all the MDAs to come and defend their budget. Let's even assume that INEC and whichever other parastators or whatever that are involved, that are going to be involved in, in 2019 elections, forgot, slept off from knowing that, look, election is coming in 2019 and this budget is going to be the one to take care of it. Why you are being called to come and defend it? You see, forgot. Now, that is one. Two, how come, Bosse, that supposed supplementary budget, Vamen they call it now, is far, far, far above the original budget for elections. Aren't we looking for trouble? So it, 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 it's not making Nigerians to suspect this government that they, they, it's as if they don't even know what governance is. They're acting as if they don't know what governance is. Which, even, which is even making me to ask that question within me. If Buhari should lose, should Paraventure lose this election, will he hand over to the winner just as Jonathan handed over to him.